Hello YouTube, uh, James DeGrazio once again. Um, today we're going to talk about weather and how weather is going to affect whether or not you're going to catch fish. Let's just leave it at that. So stay tuned, watch the video once again. Thank you for joining us on this fiery adventure with Fire Tide Fishing. Please remember to like, share, comment, and be honest with you, I'm excited about this adventure. So let's go. All right, perfect. This is more comfortable. Behind me, um, this is my buddy Marley. Um, this Marlin here I caught in Cabo San Lucas probably about two years ago now. Um, about 97 inches long, over a hundred and some pounds. Um, that day alone was really bad weather. Um, coming in from the marina control, <clears throat> the not many boats were going out I think in total maybe about 75 boats went out in the whole day uh, but I was the only one that came back with the Marlin um, was it luck a little bit was it about our, our technique sure um, a lot of individuals went out pretty far off coast you know within 30 40 miles they went out trying to catch Marlin we stuck in close because um, it was a strong wind, um, strong current and wind push the fish in closer to structure. So we fished close to um, the arch rocks in Cabo San Lucas and this is where we caught this one. Um, it was towards the end of the day. Uh, but that's going far into the deep end. So let's talk about <clears throat> your regular fish that you'd be fishing for. Um, so when you wake up in the morning and you see a wind forecast uh, projected and you know on the lake that you're fishing at where you're comfortable at um, so I was always used to just fishing the weed beds you know on the east side of this lake um, no one ever really fished the west side of the lake now we had wind pushing strong out of the west into the east side um, common thinking here would be you know the wind is pushing uh, the micro bacteria and the microbes in the water to that side of the lake um, which isn't which isn't not true like that is the truth um, the bait fish will then follow follow the <clears throat> their prey which is going to be the micro bacteria microbes in the water that they're eating uh, bugs etc and the predator fish are going to follow them. The issue is, is when you have that turbulent wind pushing and stirring the water up, um, you start losing clarity. Um, so yeah, the fish are going to be there. You might be sitting around right top of them, jigging on them, doing whatever you want, and they're not biting. It's mostly because they probably can't see it. So in my previous video is talking about using the combination of color and the combination of vibration scent etc so this is when you're going to put everything into full spectrum um if they can't see it you want them to hear it if they can't hear it and they can't see it you want them to smell it so you gotta you gotta think like a fish you gotta think of where the fish is and where where it's feeding and why it's feeding there um so wind will naturally say for example my finger is a topography it's kind of like a bay structure and you got wind coming in pushing inwards right so the the, the bait fish are going to be pocketed in there as well as the predator fish are going to be going after it so keep in mind that your structure is going to do the same thing it's going to hold fish it's going to hold bait fish it's going to hold you know bugs and, and microbes that the bait fish eat um, so you got to think like a fish uh, keep in mind not necessarily is that going to work for you when you're thinking about the wind because once again as i said turbulent water harder to catch fish yes you might catch fish they might be large fish but people always forget to go the other side of the lake so when you go to the west side of the lake um, where the wind's pushing on the west the east side's getting pounded by the waves and all the wash and everything so you go to the west side of the lake it's pretty calm Right? Let's just face it. It's calm. It's probably a nice day over there. The wind's just breaking the tree line. It's hitting the water. It's stirring everything up. The wave line is going, you know, far to the east. So you're fishing the west side. Where do you go? It's clear water. Um, you know a lot of the fish are being pushed to the other side. 
So this is where you focus on the structure. Um, very important to, you know, not necessarily rely 100% on your um, electronics that you have in your boat that will bring up the structure. Um, your sonar will bring that little humps and everything like that. Um, me on my previous boat, I ran something called um, active sonar. Uh, so what it was doing is actively mapping um, the contour lines of the lake and putting together a nice you know, picture, a topographic map of what the bottom looks like. Now you could easily go online, search your favorite fishing lake, and someone probably has uploaded uploaded something like that. Um, very important to see if you can find something like that before you go out fishing. Um, see if there's something out there. Because if you don't have that and you don't have any electronics, you're just pretty much you know guessing. You find a you find a bay, you look at the topography outside of the lake, right? You see kind of like there's a ridge coming down and it hits water, it's probably still going on under the water. So be really, really key on picking that up. Uh, be really cognizant of your surroundings when it comes to that. Um, so that's one small tip that I could suggest to you is, you know, the weather, perfect, right? You know what's going on, but if you're not catching fish, don't forget about the other side of the lake. You can see how there's a lot of things in fishing that are complicated, but not so complicated. You can probably catch fish anywhere. Anyway, that's a little tip that I got for you today. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you're keeping your lines tight because I am over here at Fire Tide Fishing. Have yourself a great evening.